So, very disappointing loss. Um, you know, kind of different than the other ones that, as far as having the lead late. Um, you know, which means you're controlling the game, you know, six minutes left. I think we score uh, 543. And so, either side can win it, you know. Um, defense stops, the offense has the ball. So, you know, make three first downs, make them use their timeouts and win the game. You know, it's everything that you want. And then they stop us. So then defense has a shot. And, you know, if we stop them, win the game. So both sides having a shot, it's very discouraging. Usually you just get one shot. And so if either one does their job, you know, we're sitting here with a really big win, um, you know, versus a very talented team. So. <sighs> tough one to swallow. Probably tougher than than the other ones, um, you know, because it was right there. Questions for Coach Nick Suss, you're up first. Lane, can you kind of just talk us through the decision making on the last two offensive drives, the three and out, and then the uh, the last drive there, right? How it ended? As far as as far as on the it seemed like you all came out a little bit conservative on the three and out, and then not using the timeouts early on the uh, the last drive. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> the first one, you know, you're in four minutes, so that's that's what you do. I know you're not used to seeing it because we don't usually do it, but you know, you got to run the ball, and um, you know, we're thinking that those situations, John gives us the best chance, um, and you got to let the clock run down like we did. Um, just felt in the two minute, you know, we were trying to push it downfield, um, and you know, when he gets tackled. You know, the guys weren't way down there to, to have to use the timeout. So just trying to get back and have them and, you know, could have could have worked. You know, like we throw the ball to Kenny and wherever he was, the 10 yard line. So we would have had that last timeout, you know, to call it with three seconds right there and have a chance to win the game. So, you know, you want to conserve them as long as you can, um, you know, in situations. So unfortunate Kenny drops that or, you know, it would have been a crazy ending there. You know, I, I don't know. You guys probably know better than me. I felt like he was down, you know, the ten yard line. So we'd had one play with three seconds to win the game. I mean, to to we would have went for two. So to try to win the game. John with WCBI. Lane, um, you know, you guys were obviously right there, as you just mentioned, in a couple of those games too earlier this year. Not even just today, like you know, the Alabama game. Arkansas and um, so is learning how to like kind of effectively closing out these games is that something that comes with building a new program with new guys or how do you kind of really build that ability with the new group yeah I mean I think that's always the case you know if guys aren't used to winning um, you know you gotta <clears throat> and I talked to him about it. it's not a magic point there's no pixie dust you know you got to make more plays than they do and execute the situations and you know that's what winning teams do you know, so uh, I don't know. I'd like to think they think we're going to win, but, you know, winning teams have that feeling like, hey, we got the ball, we're going to go win. They got the ball, we're up, we're going to stop them to win. So it's a mentality that, you know, I try to talk it, you know, throughout the game, like, hey, you know, this this is it. I, I was telling them, hey, we're going to stop them on defense, get the ball back, and, you know, in the game running the ball for over 300 yards rushing, you know, versus Auburn. So that's what should have happened. We just we didn't do it. You know, I think, again, John, you know, he gets so excited that I think he wants to make a play that can be good and bad. You know, he pulls the ball on the, the zone read because he just, you know, he's so competitive, you know, and wants to play versus, you know, the ends wide and, and hand it off. So um, that, that's what you get with him, and I understand that, especially because he doesn't play as much. So it was good that we got him involved early. You know, the two quarterbacks and, and the two running backs, you know, all had, you know, over 50 yards rushing in the game. So, um it was good that we had answers to the issues last week. These guys copied them like they should and came out, which they normally don't do, dropped eight, you know, played odd tight and dropped eight um, the whole first quarter. And so, you know, we had some new runs, some new new wrinkles. So we knew if we didn't do that, we were going to see that all year long. So that was good and actually ran them out of it and they got back to, to four down um, after that. So I think we were a lot more patient. Again, you know, here's a, you know, 51 runs in the game. Well, we run the ball more than anybody in, in the conference. Paris Alford. Hey, Lane, from your vantage point, what did you see on Auburn's last touchdown, the long play to uh, 
Williams with uh, with Kenny covering. What what did you, or Pedron, What did you see there? I don't know. You guys can probably see better than me from, you know, seeing TV and stuff and press box. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys are here. It doesn't look like it. So, you're watching TV. You probably see better than me. I just look like we're in man. We got beat. So, um, very unfortunate. You know, I'm not making any excuses. I look out there. The game's on the line. And I look out there, and the nickel in the right corner are two people that a week ago were on offense. So, that's just a situation that we're in. You know, four and six are out there trying to make call. We're actually telling them what to do during the game. You know, it's, yeah, this is like high school, but it is what it is. What the, did you get an explanation on uh, why the kickoff play was not reviewed? Well, they said they did. So, you know, you don't really challenge anymore in college because they review everything supposedly. So there's no use of challenging because, you know, I go to the guy and he says they looked at it and said they didn't see anything. So even when they don't stop it, they're still looking. Now, why they didn't stop and look closer, I have no idea. You know, that's a, that's equivalent of a scoring play, which they stop all the time now forever, it feels like. So, I don't know. Someone said post-game that it looked like his finger definitely moved. You know, but whatever. James? Uh, I know it was mentioned in the last question with, um, you know, four and six, both being on the field on defense. Is that something we can expect to see – in the future, is it just going to be a this week thing because of COVID numbers? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they're over there, and so credit to them. You know, I mean, this is I, I thought we're playing Auburn in an SEC game, trying to win an SEC game, and you know, it's like high school. We got two players that were on offense uh, at the start of the week, um, going over there trying to learn all these calls, playing defense. So just is what it is. For whatever reason, we got hit over there with COVID and injuries a lot. Nate Gabler. One more question about that clock management. You guys have that fourth and five from about midfield, four minutes to go, five minutes to go. Why take that time out instead of just taking the five yard penalty when you're going to pop? Yeah, that, that's a good question. It's very fair. Um, we were trying to draw them off sides um, with a hard count. And so we usually figure, okay, hey, the timeout's not as important because we're ahead. And so they're going to end up having to use their timeouts. But that's a, that's a very fair question. Nick Suss, what look did you see on the fake field goal trend? The kind of did you want to go for that in the third quarter? It was just something we'd said during the week, you know, that our special teams guys felt good about it. And, you know, that flip. And, and I think the flip was a little bit short, so he kind of had to come back a little bit so he couldn't run on the edge. Um, and. You know, I don't mind. I don't mind fake field goals when they don't work. It's not the end of the world because you can miss the field goal. You know, and so I think we missed the same exact spot, same hash versus Florida. You know, when we tried to kick. So I know fans. People say, "Oh, you know, you missed that." Well, you can miss the field goal too. You know, fake punt. That's that's the disaster. You know, when you don't make them. When you have situations like that one and the interception in the end zone, that kind of seem to be repeating through these first five weeks of the season. What do you say to your guys to kind of? shore up some of those game changing mistakes? Well, we're always going to be aggressive. Our players know that, you know, we're going to, you know, fake things, go for it a lot of, go for it more than on fourth down than anybody in the country. So um, I, I think that your players like that, you know, you have confidence in them. So I think that's a good thing. But the interception was, was very disappointing. Now they covered it really well, but he just threw it so late, um, especially after the emphasis all week. Outside of that, he, he did a really good job. You know, there's a, there's a third down to Mingo um, where he didn't force the ball and checked it down, and he ended up making it on third and 10, make the first down So on that touchdown drive. So that was good to see. Hey, Gabler. What's the status on Jalen Jones? Obviously, he's out now. I saw a report that it was an upper body injury. What, how is he? Uh, he is out for the season. He had surgery, so very unfortunate. You know, especially at a position that we need help and a great kid, and so uh, he is out for the year. Is it an upper body injury? Yes.